Last week, we talked about weighted hyperextensions and how they compare to Nordic hamstring curls for hamstring training. If you're curious about the difference between those two movements, you should check out that video, which is linked below in the description. Today though, I want to talk about something a bit more subtle, and that is the difference between the flat bench hyperextension versus the 45 degree hyperextension, and specifically why I believe that the 45 degree hyper is a better tool for training this amazing exercise most effectively and maximizing your gains with it. The reason for this has to do with the lever arm differences between the flat hyperextension and the 45 degree hyperextension and how these lever arms line up with the natural weak points in the hyperextension pattern. If we observe the movement or we simply perform it for ourselves, it becomes pretty clear that the weakest portion of the exercise is always the lockout. No matter what, whether you're on a 45 degree bench or a flat bench, fully engaging the glutes and pulling back with the erectors in order to achieve a straight torso in a fully locked out position is simply the natural weak point of the movement. Now, if we look at a flat hyperextension in the bottom position, the lever arm is the shortest. The hips are the axis of rotation of the movement. And at the bottom, the shoulders basically line up with the hips and parallel with gravity. So even though the hamstrings may be in a tremendously stretched position here, they're not actually under a tremendous amount of tension. The lever arm is very short. The leverage in this position is incredibly high and there is not much force to overcome in this position anyway. So really not all that much is actually happening at the bottom here. Now, as you rise out of the bottom and move more and more towards a position where the torso is parallel with the floor and perpendicular to gravity, the lever arm gradually gets longer and longer. This eventually culminates with the lever arm being the longest in the fully locked out position. So what does this mean? It means now you are in what is already the natural weak point of this exercise, the lockout. And when you're performing it on a flat bench, due to the design of the apparatus, you are also experiencing the largest amount of tension at this natural weak point. So basically, the flat hyperextension bench lines up the most difficult part of the movement with what is naturally the weakest part of the exercise. And it lines up the stronger parts of the movement with what are the easier parts of the exercise. Ergo, the execution of the exercise like this on the flat hyperextension bench does not line up favorably with the strength curve of the movement. I am of the opinion that this makes training it like this less productive in the long term. On the other hand, if we compare the flat hyperextension to the 45 degree hyperextension, we notice some very interesting changes, what I would consider massive improvements. Looking at the bottom position, the lever arm acting on the hips is at a moderate length as opposed to a short one. We're still in full hip flexion here and the hamstrings are under a massive stretch at the bottom, but because of the 45 degree angle, the shoulders remain well out in front of the hips, putting a large degree of tension on the working muscles. As you rise up out of the bottom position, the lever arm actually becomes the longest right at the midpoint of the movement. So now this part becomes the most mechanically disadvantageous portion of the exercise. But because you have already built up some momentum coming out of the bottom position where the lever arm was shorter, you will be able to move through this mechanically disadvantageous portion much more smoothly. Then you approach the lockout. Now this is still the natural weak point of the exercise, but as you rise up past the midpoint of the movement, what happens? The lever arm starts to shorten again. This means that you are gaining mechanical advantage as you move into the weak point rather than losing mechanical advantage as you move into the weak point, as is what happens during the flat hyperextension. So basically, with the 45 degree hyper, you end up with a more even distribution of tension throughout the movement. The 45 degree angle here also makes it so that the natural strength curve of the exercise lines up much better with the mechanics of the movement based on how your body is situated in space. In my opinion, this makes the 
45 degree hyperextension a better choice for training the posterior chain as it really optimizes the movement pattern. Over time, I believe this will lead to better posterior chain gains. If you took the same guy and you only had him do flat hyperextensions or you took that same guy and only had him do 45 degree hyperextensions, I think that the version of him that only did 45 degree hypers would have bigger, stronger glutes and hamstrings at the end of the day. So am I saying that the flat hyperextension is worthless? No, of course not. It's still an amazing exercise for building a big, strong posterior chain. And if it was all I had access to, you could bet your ass I would still be doing it. It also probably works the lumbar erectors a bit harder than the 45 degree version does due to that longer lever arm at the lockout. But given the choice, me and my trainees are using the 45 degree version all day long. Anyway, it's all I got for today, guys. If you enjoy these types of highly informative videos, please do remember to hit the like button before you go and leave me a friendly comment down below as well. The engagement is super helpful for my channel and for getting me noticed by the algorithm in general. And then that, that really helped my channel. So I really appreciate that guys. If you're interested in online coaching and training programs, be sure to check out on carryleadfitness.com. And as always, keep training hard. I will catch you guys next time.